Hello everyone and welcome to today's Bytesize talk. I am very happy that today we have Phil here who is going to talk about a nifty little tool as he called it um, called Excalidro um, that will help with hand-drawn or seemingly hand-drawn figures and diagrams. Off to you. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, in true Phil style, I will be doing today is a bit of an unconventional uh, talk. There won't be any slides. It's going to be just a short, fun one. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Excalidraw. Um, it's a tool that I really like. It's been around for a little while. I use it for specific use cases, and I love it whenever I use it. And I think that we should all be using it all the time. Um, it's particularly good when um, doing any kind of drawings or schematics or diagrams for anything. Um, particularly documentation, which of course in NF Core we spend a lot of our time writing. Um, and the other place it's quite good at, uh, for is kind of brainstorming meetings, um, idea generation, um, kind of chatting to someone and kind of mapping things out in a kind of interactive and kind of scrappy way, basically like a whiteboard if you are stood in an office um, in, in real life. Um, so these are kind of two real strong use cases for Excalibur, Draw, and I'm going to quickly sort of show what it can do uh, and I'm going to finish up with a couple of pretty nerdy bits right at the very end about some some webby stuff and kind of cool tricks that you can pull with it. Um, but the focus that I'm really on here is that why it's good for folks like us who are developers, but with a strong focus on um, kind of interacting and communicating with users and people who are trying to get concepts across. So Excalibur. Um, if you go to excalibur.com like this, um, you get dumped into an editor um, pretty quickly, and uh, you probably end up with something like this. I think there's some kind of onboarding, but you pretty quickly get to a canvas. And if you've used any image editing software ever, then it will be hopefully pretty familiar to you. You've got the key features along the top. You've got a hand to move around. You've got an arrow to sort of select stuff. Um, and then you've got a toolbar on the side to do a bunch of stuff. And if I click stuff, I have some, some tools around those things. So very simply, we can kind of use it to um, let's draw a blue box. And the key thing here is you can see it's not very neat, which is one of the things that differentiates it against other tools. So the lines are scrappy. You can make them even scrappier, um, which means that you don't have to worry about them lining up because they're already scrappy, which actually makes a huge difference. You can kind of make them dashed, um, thin or thick, and you can change the background. And then I can double click into there and I can say that Excalibur draw, let's say, what is Excalibur draw? Um, let's bump that text down to medium size. And draw another little one over here, say green. Hold shift. Say it is open source web based image editor. And it can let us draw diagrams and sketches and stuff. And then I grab the arrow, put it into black, and you can see I kind of snap things together uh, with the arrow tool very quickly, um, like this. And then these are kind of anchored. So when I move them around, the arrows move as well. This is not particularly revolutionary if you've used any kind of framework um, for or tool for kind of doing flowcharts and stuff. A lot of these tools are familiar, but I just wanted to show that you can do it here as well. And it's really easy. And with like a few clicks, I was able to sort of throw stuff together. And you can kind of see that there's got this particular style um, where things are kind of sloppy. And um, I think actually kind of weirdly makes for uh, images and docs and stuff, which look kind of a bit more professional um, because you don't notice that none of the lines match. <laughs> um, what else? It's got a library uh, built into it of kind of other images that you can drag and drop in. So that's kind of useful. Um, and you can kind of, you can see this one up here. I, I pulled in as part of a library here. And uh, it's got a, it looks quite short, but you hit browse libraries down here. And then I can kind of, there's just like loads of them, loads of them hit, add to it. It's kind of draw and I can drag in some emojis. Um, as well as kind of, you know, creating your own, doing whatever else you want to do. It's a bit creepy. Um, yeah, and uh, it's pretty similar to some other tools. I don't know if anyone in the audience has ever played with Figma, for example. 
Um, if you've used Figma, you might have used uh, FigJam. We use that quite a lot in Sakura. Um, it's really, really good. Also, Miro is another kind of online whiteboarding tool. Um, both of these are pretty similar. Um, Figma's not free though, so um, Excalibur has that going for it. Um, last couple of demo points you can do with shapes along here, and we can also kind of draw ourselves a nice freehand heart like that. Oh, I missed. Try and connect it. Oh, this is not a good demo. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but normally you, if I'm if I'm not doing a live demo, I would connect and do a hash, and I can save three. Um, and I can change the font and everything else. Um, got a couple of other fun features. One of the ones I was going to live demo to you all right now is this button up here. Uh, I can just share a link, a web link, which I can um, kind of share with anybody. And that's nicer than sharing an exported image because it is updatable the whole time. So I can keep working on it. And whenever people visit that link, it'll be up to date. But I can also do this share session. If I copy that URL, I'm going to dump it into the meeting chat here. And then this is your chance. Everyone in the audience, I want you to click on that link, load it up in your browser, and come and mess up all my nice artwork. <laughs> um, and so this is the bit which especially is like um, Big Jam, or if you've ever used that tool. So you can see this, we've got multiple cursors all spinning around here. So you can imagine if we're on a Zoom meeting like this, we're planning, mapping out how ideas work, how we can work together. Is You can kind of really easily work together on, on this kind of um, big uh, whiteboard together, which is really, really useful. Um, it's uh, anonymous by default, but you can set up your name and then you have your little cursor spinning around. Very good. <laughs> Um, and yeah, you can sort of follow people around, which is kind of fun. So see what other people are doing on their screens, uh, see what Silver Clown's doing. Um, which is also good because if there's one person leading a meeting, you can just follow their cursor as they like show you around some stuff that's been done previously or whatever. Um, while you guys all carry on doing that, I'm going to show you a couple of things here. We can um, open files, we can save it to kind of Excalibur Draw and stuff. You can export the image, which is usually kind of what you do when you're finished. You can so just pull out a static PNG or, or SVG file, uh, choose whether you want the background or not. Oh, someone did a dinosaur, a, a dragon, that's excellent. Um, and there's like a command palette for doing, you know, fast developer friendly things with shortcuts um, and various other stuff. You can also um, tweak a whole bunch of settings such as setting dark mode, which is rather cool for those of you who like using dark mode, myself included. Um, okay, I want to give a couple of real life examples of where uh, I've used this personally. The, an obvious one is a multi QC uh, website and documentation, uh, where you can see this uh, sketch here, uh, right on the front page of uh, the docs, explaining kind of what multi QC as a concept is done using Excalibur. Pretty simple, but hopefully kind of fairly nice and conceptual. <laughs> Uh, another one is the Nextflow documentation. So if you hop into fundamentals um, and go to the loads um, and go over to, I think, channels was one, um, then this has got a nice little, there you go, it's got to draw concept of what, what tasks and channels and files are and stuff. So you can see the kinds of things I'm using Excalibur Draw for here. It's like, it's very simple drawings. And it's only ever really meant for that. Um, but really good for kind of getting concepts across. Okay, um, that's an overview of the kind of web-based tool. <laughs> Thank you, Terrific Eagle, working hard. Um, the final bit I want to sort of chime in on a bit is why it's really cool for um, working as developers. Um, and for that, I'm actually going to pull over a, a terminal window here. And um, got the thing in here, so I'm going to load up. VS Code, and you'll see why in a second. Um, I'm going to drop a new file in here, and I'm going to call it my picture. Oops. Dot Excalibur dot PNG. Could be a dot SVG as well. Doesn't matter. But if you end the file name with dot Excalibur and you have the um, Excalibur. VS Code extension built in, if you've got that installed in VS Code, then VS Code will load the this file 
with the with the Excalibur Draw editor, and you can just start editing stuff straight away. Um, this is great if you are in the middle of writing some documentation. You've got your Markdown file open. You're like, oh, you could do the sketch here. You just create the file, and you're in the editor straight away, no messing around. Um, and it's just like super easy. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, and the other really nice thing about this, if I close this, hop into the second one, uh, which I think honestly is like just absolute genius. I don't quite understand how they managed to do it. Um, if I load up, this is the VS Code project for the MultiQC website. So in the MultiQC repo, the code repo, which has all the docs in it. The docs are all written using Markdown. And in here, I have the Excalibur um, sketch, which I showed you on rendering on the website. Now, what's really cool is that this file is still editable. So I've checked this into Git. It's an image, and it's saved in Git, and I can open it in VS Code with Excalibur, and it's still editable exactly as it was the day I made it. This is even true with Cleverbit for PNG files. So what it does, especially with PNGs, is it saves a static image, which is totally compatible, renders everywhere, super, super easy, but also does some clever stuff with like the PNG header, uh, where it saves all the editable information. So you can still reopen that PNG file, flat file, in Excalibur and edit it after the fact, and anyone can do that. So this makes it brilliantly collaborative in like a long time frame that anyone can load up your, your repo with your docs in it and jump in and update that, um, that file. And there's only one set of source files. What I find myself in a position many times where I've been editing docs written by someone else and there's an image that they've made in like PowerPoint or Keynote and there's a bit which is outdated or I want to tweak and I can't because I don't have the source file um, and the person's left or they've lost their Keynote file or whatever. Um, with Excalibur, everything's in that one file. It's all in the Git repo. It's all together and it's always editable. And it also is the same file that renders on the end product website. So you don't have that loss of kind of um, history or editability. The whole thing is all together. Super, super powerful. That alone is the main reason I use Excalibur. Okay, final thing. Now, um, if I hop over onto the MultiQC website again, and show this, uh, this is a really super nerdy bit, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, show this diagram again. Now in the editor, it was in light mode and here it's in dark mode and I can switch between light mode and dark mode and the, the image carries on working, right? I don't have black writing on a black background making it invisible. Um, it's actually sort of dynamically updating this image to make it work in both light mode and dark mode, which is cool. I first saw this done on the docs for Rich, my favorite fanboy package by Will McGugan. Um, and so I dug out how he did it and I've been copying it ever since. Um, one way you can do this when you do web development is you swap two images in and out. So I'd save the same file twice, one dark mode version, one light mode version, and then select which one to show. That's not what I'm doing here. This is a single source image. Um, and this particular one is an SVG. And that's important. You can't do this very easily with PNGs or it doesn't look so good. So I save it as an SVG, which makes it nice and editable. And then I have a little snippet of magic CSS, which is this one. And so this is the MultiQC website. And you can see there's a little bit of CSS here, which is applying just to the Excalibur um, CS SVGs. So I have a selector here, which says, find the end of documentation, um, ignore any icons. And then this is Tailwind CSS, which I guess if you're not involved in web development, you won't be familiar with, but it's just applying a bunch of CSS here. And it's saying, okay, make it um, like full size to fit the page. Um, the inner part of the SVG, the rect element, which is an element within the background image, basically, of, uh, I want you to make transparent so there's no background color. Um, and then this is a key bit. In dark mode, we've got the dark selectors here. Invert the image and then rotate the hue 180 degrees. And what that effectively does is sort of fix the uh, the colors. So if I pop up to this HVG, I can turn these on and off. Um, and then I can go, so without these fixes, this is how it looks like. That's the light mode image, uh, which is completely unreadable. Um, and then I can invert the image like that. And then that's inverted, so I can read it, but the colors are all wrong. And then I rotate the colors and then they are approximately correct. So purple stays purple, orange stays orange. And that's the trick, little snippet of, of, of uh, CSS, which works if as long as you has, have the SVGs embedded within the website, which of course the NF Core website also does. With that, 
head back to our collaborative whiteboard of joy, see what you've all drawn while I've been away, uh, and happy to take any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. So uh, are there any questions uh, for Phil about this tool uh, from the audience? You can now unmute yourself. Looks like people are still busy drawing things. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> oh. what it looks like if I go to the website and I'm not logged in. So that's the home page. Okay. I was going to show you some AI stuff. Because, you know, everything's AI these days. I'm going to say text diagram. And there you go. Draw me a flow diagram with the key steps when planning a presentation, which I clearly didn't do very well. <laughs> uh, and uh, it goes off and it um, builds some image for me, which I can just drag and drop and edit as necessary. Hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, I was actually wondering, um, I was looking for an apple, and I could not find an apple in the in the browse library um am i doing something wrong or is there a very limited amount of uh icons that i can choose um probably not probably limited but it would be cool if um i don't know how these are set up i was thinking this earlier because i was also wondering about having the nf core logo in here um i bet is everything to do with excalibur is pretty much open source and free they do have like a freemium thing where they have some stuff you can pay for but most of it's open source so i bet there's a way to add an icon pack uh where and if someone is feeling really keen that would be really fun to uh go and create an nf core icon pack which then anyone could kind of one click um add into excalibur and then we have all the all the multi qc apple and whatever else that'd be really fun i mean it would be interesting to have this tool also for our um, our metro maps to some extent. Mm -hmm. True, yeah. The metro maps, like, so um, if I draw a, a, an arrow, you can sort of see that they are, you have kind of elbow joints and bendy, um, but you can't necessarily do the 45 degree angles for metro maps. So I don't know how well it would work there, but certainly for kind of, cruder um, representations of, of pipeline overviews for like if you want to propose something on new pipelines or something like that you don't want to spend ages drawing pixel perfect metro maps then um this would be a great way to do it i mean it would be cool if we could like upload our own kind of shapes and stuff uh, that we can then use to make the metro maps with mm -hmm. and people wouldn't need to have like illustrator or but like pass around yeah. with inkscape we definitely have like the file icons and stuff. I think we've got some of that already, right? For another drawing tool, which I've never used myself actually. Uh, graphical design, graphic design. So we've got all these kind of components down here. Yes, uh, and that is mainly for Inkscape, I yeah. think. There you go. So there's Draw.io, um, which I and bio icons. But I've, I don't, I don't know about anyone else who's listening. I've never really used Draw.io myself, to my shame. Um, but yeah, I guess it would be cool if we could have something similar for Excalibur. Yep. Okay, if there are no more questions from the audience, then I would like to thank you, Phil, for demoing this um, really cool tool and uh, everyone else for listening in. And I hope to see you for the next bite size as well. Bye bye. Thanks so much, everyone.